Hey guys, it's Tom from Something RS here, and today I have with me a very special guest. His name is Matt, also known as Rune House Videos. Say hi, Matt. Hey guys. Uh, I'll put an annotation and a link to his channel on screen and in the descri description and all that good stuff, so you can go and check him out, subscribe. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to basically read through a forum post that's, uh, what's his name, Moa Dread, a forum mod has created where he's summarised all the information that's released about the combat rework so far. He's like compiled it into one forum post, uh, one forum thread and it's really useful and easy access to the information so if you're really interested in the updates coming in the future, go check it out and we'll um, put the form quick find code in the description as well. Yeah, but we're basically going to read from this and then give you our opinions on it. So the first big sort of thing to note here is the changes to special attacks. So special attacks are being removed from all weapons as part of the combat update. In their place, we're introducing new abilities for you to unlock and use from your shiny new action bar. So special attacks being removed, but we're getting new abilities as well. So it, it's kind of having multiple special attacks on each weapon, but it, it's not sort of held back by the arbitrary special attack bar. Yeah, well, like the special attack bar now, you recover 10% special every 30 seconds, so it's five minutes between full special attack bars. So it's kind of just like, uh, you know, 12 times an hour. That's the most you can spec if you're using, like, claws or whatever. It is useful now, but it, it'll be more useful when we have these abilities that, you know, get better as we get better combat stats. Like, the special attack for someone with 30 attack won't be as good as or as a variety as the people with, like, 99 attack or strength or defense or mage or ranged. Yeah, it'll basically just give us more to do instead of just uh, special attacking once in a while. We'll be doing it constantly, pretty much. Yeah, it's interesting. We, we're doing to be playing with um, guessing... Um, in saying what we're saying, but I think that it might have something to do with cooldowns, like Vengeance, you can only cast every 30 seconds. But in saying that, um, Jagex has posted that video on their own channel, the RuneScape channel, and it shows the cooldowns between buffs and abilities and stuff, like bleeding effects, and it's got that, like, uh, you know what I'm talking about, Tom? The, the shadow that goes up until it's completely gone, and then it just disappears off that interface. I am not entirely sure what you're on about. You might want to explain it for those who are, who don't know, such as me. <laughs> All right. So, um, Jagex released a video, and it's got um, a, an action bar that they said would be part of the interface. Uh, not the action bar, sorry. Uh, an interface that'll be part of the interface, and it's got on it all your current buffs and and weaknesses to different attacks, based on on things that have been used on you. Like if you're bleeding out for 10 seconds, it'll have a bleed out effect on your um, current status and, and that'll sh slowly be shaded in and, and then when it's completely shaded in it'll be removed because that, that shading is just the timer based on different effects. So if you're bleeding and losing like 50 damage per second for 10 seconds, that's 500 damage in 10 seconds and you'll just know when that'll wear out and hopefully they'll have stuff like the overloads on there as well so that you know how long you've got until you have to re-overload kind of thing. Repair renewal, mm. anti-fire, those kind of buffs are some of the buffs that we have in-game at the moment. We just don't exactly have a timer or an interface that shows all of them. So what you're basically saying is we'll be able to know when to do stuff, basically. Well, yeah, and our, our new abilities, if they if they work on cooldowns, like, say, every 45 seconds you can use a, bleeding, a special bleeding attack if you've got, say, over 50 attack level or something with it, maybe slash and stab weapons, um, it'll show you when you can redo that, like how long until you can redo that, rather than just a special attack bar that goes up every 30, 30 seconds. Yeah. Kind of like how Vengeance works now, but it just doesn't show us how long until we can Vengeance again. It just says you can only Vengeance once every 30 seconds, so you have to keep kind of clicking on Vengeance to try and pop one up kind of thing. Yeah, I, I quite like this change. It's It'll just make combat so much more interesting, to be honest. Um, and on this special attack subject, Dragon Claws and Armadil Godsword. No, you can't use an AGS spec with claws. 
claws are a pain currently. Yes, they are two-handed items, but in the new system, we consider them small weapons, so they can't use the AGS ability. And this part is quite interesting, and it sort of explains why AGSs have been crashing a bit, and Bandos God Swords have been going up in price. The four God Swords will also be effective... No, sorry. They'll effectively be the same in, in the new system. They'll have the same stats as each other, and they'll both have the same abilities, but the only difference between them is the cosmetic differences. So, essentially, Bandos God Sword now has AGS spec. Yeah, well, it's is... just we're all going to have the same abilities depending on what weapons we're using, aren't we? Yeah. Like, say, I, I was thinking, that's what I meant before, like, slash weapons might and stab weapons might give bleed-out effects, but crush weapons probably won't do that. It'll have, like, some other different extra damage effect, or ability, I should say, that you can use once every, every so often. Yeah, I'd, I'd imagine that the God Swords will have like the standard two hands who Jagex has actually confirmed that the all the two big two handed weapons like God Swords, two handers and stuff, will have the judgment special attack, which is the AGS special attack at the moment. It's just gonna be an ability, not a special attack that you can use every so often. And um yeah. Yeah. So as part of the combat update, every piece of armor and weaponry in the game is having its stats reworked. So that current powerful weapons like the God Swords uh, make up for the loss of their special attack by having badass stats. That's pretty so that's interesting, isn't it? Know. So it will have more consistent damage, basically, is what they're saying here. And another little side note is also two-handed weapons don't suck the big one in the new combat system. Which is an interesting way to phrase it. Sucking the big one. <laughs> I guess that's <laughs> like bows at the moment. Like short bows just suck a big one, don't they? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> In regards to trying to bust out Dragon Claw special with more, the new abilities have certain weapon requirements on them. So, for example, Dragon Claw special is now known as the ability Flory and cannot be performed with two-handed swords and balls, etc. So, I'm kind of confused as to why the Dragon Claws have crashed recently, because th its ability is essentially going to remain the same, except it will be shared across more similar weapons, i.e. the Rune Claws and Iron Claws and what have you. I think it's just general people panicking. And the market will recover afterwards. Yeah, but it's not like Dragon Claws are suddenly going to be useless. They'll still do the most damage with this ability. What I think as a high-level player is that I probably won't need Claws. Like, at the moment, if you go slaying or whatever, like a high-level person would take their rapier and a pair of Claws to use the special attack every five minutes. But um, with this update and having the abilities on all the weapons, like the bleed-out effects and stuff, what I'm starting to think is that we'll only need the one weapon unless we're like swapping between creatures. Like, for example, a high level might use a rapier because it stabs against dragons, but then use something that slashes like a long, a long sword against like demons or something. And like, if we have all these abilities, like the bleed out effects, the choking effects, the all these different effects or abilities, I should say, with our rapier or with our longsword, there's no real need to swap weapon to use a, a dragon claw flurry attack. That's what I'm. That's the idea I'm getting. I think the focus is less on just having a weapon just to use it only for its special attack, but the weapon itself will be useful. Yeah, well, they said that as well. Like, I'm sure we'll get down to it, but the um, the the point that all weapons of the same tier, for example, all rune and dragon weapons, will be the same have the same damage per minute damage over time as all other weapons of that tier. For example, a it won't not it it'll be no longer the case that if you don't use a scimitar, you're an idiot. Uh, if you use a longsword, you can use a longsword, and it'll do just as good as a scimitar in the overall damage over time. So yeah. So there'll uh, be more so... diverse weapons being used yeah you'll essentially have reasons to use stuff other than scimitars and uh, rapiers and stuff yeah exactly 
But um, another little note here is that I think you've already said this a few minutes ago. But oh, yeah. You unlock new abilities by leveling your combat skills, such as attack, strength, etc. So basically, the higher your attack level is, the more attack abilities you'll have. And the same with strength, range, mage, and even constitution and defense now, because... Uh, We'll get into that later, I guess. I mean, it'll be good, though, because at the moment, raising your attack stat is useful. Like, it makes you miss less. Like, it increases your accuracy and lets you use higher-level weapons, like rune at level 40, dragon at level 60 kind of thing. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't give you something new every level. Like, if, for example, at level 50 attack, you unlock the first bleeding effect so you can cause your opponent to bleed out at, like... 20 damage a second for 10 seconds but then at level 60 attack you get this one that does 22 damage per second for 10 seconds level 95 you might get a, a really strong bleed out effect or ability that does maybe 50 damage per second for 10 seconds and just stuff like that that they'll have the ability to make it so that you get something new or increase it like into something better the higher level you get yeah it'll just add to the add to the skill in general and speaking of adding to skills, they'll be adding constitution abilities, which is quite interesting, because previously it just sort of doesn't really have much use other than just giving you more health. Yeah, how much health you have. But now it'll sort of have abilities like uh, healing spells, I think. Yeah, kind of like healing abilities, I guess. Maybe you'll be able to heal once every two minutes or something, a certain amount of life points or something. Yeah, because it is a health skill, so being able to do health-related things would make sense, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'll just quickly steer on to this next point. Free-to-play abilities. Free-to-play will have access to the action bar and some of the new abilities, but not all of them. Yeah, so for example, like I said about the bleed-out effects, free-to-play might have the low-level bleed-out effects, but to get the stronger ones, you might need to be a member. Which is fair enough. I think it just kind of refers to, um, obviously, free-to-play players can't access members' weapons. Yeah. So they won't they won't be able to access the specific abilities that tie in with that weapon. Yeah, well, I'm sure, like, they won't let free-to-play have special attacks. It'll kind of just be like, you won't be able to use the ability specific to that weapon, but you might be able to use general abilities. Yeah, maybe. Because I think claws are actually members' items, aren't they? Yeah, you can't use claws in free-to-play. So free-to-play players won't be able to do flurry, even if they're using bronze claws. Yeah. Kind of sad, but I guess that's the way Jagex has made the game. Uh, I'll just steer on to the next point then. Barrows. So the barrow set effects, and on a similar vein, the pest control void set effects, will be retained in the new system. But what, what it doesn't say on this thread is that it only if the set effects only affect auto attacks and not ability attacks. Yeah, okay. Like normal so, normal attacks, not the abilities like the bleed out effect or the super strong hit or anything. No, you won't be able to do ridiculously high amounts of damage in Darox, I'm afraid. Yeah, it'll just be the standard attacks. Yep. And likewise, Void won't increase the damage of your abilities. It'll just be your auto-attack that's affected still. Yeah. So yeah, that's all there is to say on that. So one other really interesting point that they've brought up is future abilities. So currently all of the abilities are unlocked through leveling your skills. However, we have designed the new system so that abilities can be added in at a later date with their own unlock requirements. And the example they give here is that Modmark is keen to give new abilities as rewards for Grandmaster quests. Discuss, Matthew. Go. Because okay. I have the quest cape. <laughs> well, so, I haven't so that's done... that's not a problem for me. I haven't done very many quests. I've only got like 250 quest points. So before September, before the um, the, the um, combat evolution goes live, I'm going to have to get my ass out and do some quests. But... It's not right now, or not when the beta is going to be. Oh, not when the beta is going to go live in the live game when it's released. Uh, so yeah, I haven't done many quests. I've only got about 250 quest points. I really need to 
um, do some more quests. And the the plan for the um, combat evolution is for it to go live in September. So I've got a couple of months to do all the quests. And with that being said, though, it's not going to be something that's happening when the combat evolution is released. It's more of a thing in the future. Mod Mark's talking about is a good idea for abilities would be quest requirements. Just like some weapons now, like you can't use a dragon dagger unless you've done Lost City. Same kind of thing, I guess. Like the dragon dagger special attack at the moment is pretty cool. So, you know, future abilities will be released by quest just like current dragon weapons, I guess. Yeah, that's a good point. So the new abilities through Man- Grand Master Quest, sorry, will only come with like obviously new Grand Master Quest, not existing ones. Yeah. But it's useful to have the quests done anyway, just in case they become a requirement for the new ones. Yeah, well, most Grand Master Quests do have lots of quest requirements. Yeah, I suppose. So the next point. Special restore potions will still be useful. They just do something different in the new system. Not sure if we're revealing that new feature yet, though. So if the minute, for those of you who don't know, spec restore pots basically restore your special attack by 25% every 30 seconds, which is kind of useful for just um, PVM in general, because I don't think you can use them in PvP, can you? No, you can't use any of the um, um, untradeable potions in the wilderness yet. Hence the word yet. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. But uh, yeah. So enhanced Excalibur and healing. The enhanced Excalibur special is obviously gone because they're removing all special attacks as they currently exist. So like this, we've said earlier... Um, Players who train constitution or defense will have access to new abilities that can heal them in different ways. And one of the abilities is uh, a heal over time effect, like the Enhanced Excalibur special, uh, but it'll be a constitution ability. Yeah, so like it might go up in tiers again, like every 10 constitution levels you get, it might be like slightly more healing over time, like starting at 10 life points every 3 seconds for 30 seconds. So a total of 100 life points healed over 30 seconds and like the next level up might be 120 life points over 30 seconds if you know what I mean like it could just go up in tiers based on your level for the highest level ability you can use or it could just remain the same ability but just sort of scale with your level yeah that's what I mean like it could just like you know how the prayers are like um, thick skin and then rock skin um in the normal prayer book are like t- 10 levels apart and they give you 5% difference but it, like it would be better if that that prayer just changed to the to the higher level one when you got that level so then your prayer book mm. wouldn't be so cluttered as such yeah although i guess with the lower level prayers they have a slower drain rate as well yeah that's true they should probably balance that i think that they should pretty much have the same drain rate just the higher prayer level you are the better effects they have possibly yeah, I guess so. I mean, the lower level spells are redundant for high levels anyway. I mean, exactly. Press. Like we don't go around using water strike if we have, if we can use water blast. Uh, if if cost wasn't an issue per se, like I don't go around with a mithril scimitar when I've got a chaotic rapier. Mm, exactly. That's the same sort of principle with the prayers. Uh, so if you're wondering what's going to happen to the ex- enhanced Excalibur since it's abilities being removed uh, basically the reward for doing the Seer's Diary will be the Enhanced Excalibur weapon itself which will have much better stats for it that's interesting though, like they say it'll have much better stats, like it's currently about the same as a Rune Longsword I believe, for much better stats it'd have to be like a Dragon Longsword or better and that's really interesting because it only costs 500 coins to replace so if it has much better than a dragon longsword, I can see a lot of like pures or or low levels just just getting that sword to use it in like PvP or dangerous areas because if they don't increase the cost of it, it'll only cost 500 GP to replace, which is cheap as chips. Well, bear in mind that uh, the Seer's Elite Diary sort of has some very high requirements. Yeah, it which does. A lot of, which a lot of pures won't have. Yeah. They just straight up will not have those skills because they can't be bothered to train them. But yeah, oh, well, next point then. 
PvP abilities. The new abilities are not prohibited in any way in PvP. However, you will have lots of abilities you can also use in PvP to help mitigate incoming damage. So this next point really right here is really interesting. So, for example, there is one defense ability that causes the next ability against you to heal you rather than harm you. So that's basically an anti sort of ultimate ability <laughs> ability. Yeah, like if if you see someone swap to the DH axe, you're going to instantly be like, "Oh gosh, use this ability Free. so that I get healed <laughs> if they actually hit." But, you know, rather than getting hit in 800, you might just get healed to full. Yeah. I ima I imagine that could be quite annoying though. Yeah, but Cause... if it has a big cooldown, like you can only use it once every five minutes, I can't see it being too overpowered. It'd just be like really good at, you'd have to be good at timing it and predicting what your opponent's going to do. But it's just like vengeance. Yeah. Like you can pop a vengeance now and then the opponent can just hit like a 50 on you with their whip and you're like, oh, that's great. You just broke my vengeance on, and it only did like 30 damage to you. That was so pointless. <laughs> so it'll be funny when someone uses this ability and then they get hit, like the opponent hits nothing on them. Or like three damage and they get healed three life points. And you're like, oh, fantastic. Now I can't use that again for five minutes. <laughs> yeah. But I think with the new system, um, ability damage will be sort of more consistent. Rather than just like look at the draw whether you're hit or not. Yeah, well, with that being sort of like a that, minimum hit. With that being said, I saw the video with the two Jagex mods showing us melee, mage and range um, in the in the beta servers. And they were talking about the this ranging abilities and like you can hold the bow to draw back and aim more precisely and and um you like for example you won't you that's a uh, impossible to miss hit you're like hundred percent guaranteed to hit damage on that hit which is really interesting and then there's another one that makes it a little bit more powerful just stuff like that to have more control over when you do good damage would be very nice yeah they want to sort of make it less look based and more skill based. It's what they've said a lot of times. Yeah, it's more, it should be more about knowing what skills to use and when rather than hoping that you hit a good combo. Yep, no more praying that you get a good hit, essentially. <laughs> yeah, you can physically say, okay, I want a good hit right now, and then be like, oh, I can't use it again for three minutes, but that's okay. Yep, so I'll just move on to the next point then. Release date. I'm sure you're all curious to know when... Like after the beta is finished, you'll be all wanting to know when it'll actually come out. The initial plan is September. However, if we find things that need no more time to polish based on the feedback from the beta, then we'll extend the beta period as long as we need to. It's good to know that they won't release it prematurely. Like They're going to make sure that it's all good and done and dusted and perfected before they release it into the game. To be honest, I think it already looks pretty good and none of us have even played it yet. <laughs> yeah, but, but but that's because there's only a couple of Jagex mods and they're doing it correctly. Wait until the beta goes live. I'm sure we're all going to find hundreds of glitches because there's going to be more players and we're going to be doing different things, if you know what I mean. Like, there's no yeah. way a couple of QA testers can test the whole of RuneScape against every monster with every weapon, but I'm sure that if they let 50,000 of us go on, we're going to find stuff a lot quicker than they can. That's why they're doing the beta. Yeah, but as they say, the initial plan is September, and if things go well, hopefully we'll see it in September, and it won't get delayed until Christmas or whatever. That'd be fantastic, and you know what? I think the bonus XP weekend is in September as well. Ooh. So, speaking of bonus XP, next point, Slayer training speed. So, from our initial testing, slaying will be faster in the new combat system, and that's with the current sort of XP rates and yeah. But we'll be adjusting the Slayer XP given per monster to try and bring it in line with the live game XP rates. So what they don't want to do is they don't want to devalue people that have got higher level Slayers at the moment at their really slow rate. Because Slayers are pretty slow skill at the moment. I think it is the slowest skill in the game. Um, and they don't want to make it devalued for people that have got 99. But... What I gather from that is that we'll be able to kill them quicker, but we'll still get the same XP per hour because that's what they want. But that that means we'll go through tasks a lot quicker, and I'm not sure whether I'm 
I'm happy about this or sad about this. I mean, it'll be good for loot because we'll get more drops per hour of slaying and the same XP, but we're just going to have to change locations and tasks a lot more often, if that makes sense. Like at the moment, if it takes me 45 minutes to do a Abyssal Demon task of 175, it'll probably take me like 30 minutes or less to do that task. I'll get the same XP as if I if it took 45 minutes oh, maybe, per time. May- yeah. What were you going to say there? Maybe they could just increase the amount of monsters you get assigned for each task. That would be good. That would counter my worries. Because then, obviously, they know it's going to be faster to kill stuff. So they could just give you more to kill. Yeah. To sort of counteract that. I think the dashing abilities are going to be nice for Slayer as well. Like, you can just dash around, hopefully, and attack, get it, jump into combat. Like, um, I think it was one of the mods saying in their video. Yeah, that, that's definitely going to be really cool. <laughs> so I love being able to charge at people like that. Anyway, next point. Skilling on the action bar. You can definitely use the new action bar, uh, action bar for skilling. You can drag pretty much anything onto the action bar to make your life just easier. For example, you can put High Elk onto the bar in slot 1 and then just press the 1 key to cast it and then click on the item you want to elk. Uh, not sure why you'd want to do that specific example when you can just keep pressing 5 on your keyboard with mouse keys. <laughs> yeah, but they're just using it as an example. Like, if you could press 1 to... Like, say, for example, you're maging in, in the new Bounty Hunter Crucible area and, you wanna, and you're wanna using Storm of Armadale but you want to use Entangle. You don't want to have to click on the spell book or press F5 and then click on the spell and then click on the person because you've got to take your mouse over to the interface and then take it back to the person. But, for example, if you can right-click the person, bring up the attack option, then quickly press 6 on your keyboard which would select the spell Entangle, then you can just click on the person and it'd be much less room for error. You'd be able to like, control yourself better. Like, for example, you know what I'm saying there, Tom? Like, you can click on the person, right-click on the person, sorry, click spell and then use it on that person. Or maybe you just click on the person to start attacking them and then you just press the spell or whatever. Yeah, like either that or either way. But, yeah, so I think that'd be useful so you won't have to be mucking around with the interface and then looking for the right person to attack again. It, that's always a, that's always an area where lots of people have error. Uh, a, a better example of uh, skilling with the action bar is that um, you can put logs onto the bar and then press the button that you've assigned the logs to to bring up the craft menu, which is like uh, if you want to fletch them or burn them. Yeah, and if you've done that once before, like if you bring up the craft bar and click fletch, then the next load you do, it'll just bring up bows. So you just withdraw the items, press your action bar hotkey, and then click on long bows or whatever for fletching at the bank, which is just more convenient, I guess. But the other thing that I'll mention, it was in one of the Jagex videos, is that um, you're not putting, like if you're putting a log on the action bar or a piece of, or a shark or something, it's not that shark, it's just a shark in your inventory. So. You can use all the logs up, and the log will still be on the action bar when you bank and then bring out more logs. You can just press that button again because the log will still be on the action bar. It will just have zero available while there's zero in your inventory. For example, like you won't have to fill up five slots with sharks to eat five sharks. It will just be the one shark, and then it will just take all sharks from your inventory in order kind of thing. Yeah, because it's like at the minute you sort of have to click on each specific food item. Yeah. But... But now it'll just sort of be grouped into one ability, if that makes sense. And that applies for prayer potions and brews and stuff as well. Like I saw on the action bar picture, the the Jagex QA tester that's got that picture for us. It's also on the um, Rune Wikia and stuff. You can check it out. It's um, got brews and prayer pots on the action bar, and they're three dose. Um, like, I hope that isn't just, like, you can drink all your three doses and then you'll have to have the two doses on there. I hope that the brew pitcher will use your two and one and three and or flasks and use your five and six doses as well, like, in order, not drink them all down to two and then all down to one. That would just be tedious, wouldn't it? You really want to get one brew drunk so you get that extra inventory space. Hopefully the people in the beta will give form feedback and explain to Jagex that that's what they need for bossing and everything. It would just be silly to have it any other way. I think that... Uh, icon on the action bar is just pretty much just a picture it's not I don't think it really has any significant meaning 
Yeah. Like like what you've just explained. But they need to look into that. They can't. Hopefully, that's not an oversight when it goes live in September. But I'm sure people will pick it up and give feedback on the forms. Yeah, and that's what the beta's all about in the end, giving feedback. It's when we're on the beta, if we have to keep putting like different doses of brews and prayer potions on our action bar, we're going to be like, hey, Jagex, this is not real good. We need to have it so that our, it'll use our lowest dose first and only one at a time kind of thing until we mm-hmm. pull up and then it'll go on to the next potion. Yeah, so I think we've said enough on that. Next point, new bosses. The intention is that they will bring out new bosses with with this new system in mind. We hope to release big giant who <laughs> the wording on this is fantastic. We hope to release big giant huge bosses that take proper teamwork and party roles to take down further down the line that is. These bosses haven't been designed yet though. So for now we are focusing on getting the combat rework done. And then once it's out on the live servers, we can start thinking about cool new bosses. So, new bosses that require party rolls. We will need a tank to sort of reduce the amount of damage that people take. And hopefully you'll we- need a mage and a range as well, because that'll be good. If you had a variety, like you can be like, oh, I'll be the ranger, and someone else can be like, oh, I'll mage. Yeah, hopefully uh, rangers and mages and, well, meleeers as well. Will each have sort of their own sort of special specialities is the word. So, for example, rangers could maybe uh, slow people down, or uh, maybe mages could bind people, which could be used in a PVM situation. Yeah. To sort of keep a monster away from everyone. I mean, I guess you could do that already to some extent. But it's just it's, not it's just not viable it's not effective yeah pretty much so i'm looking forward to seeing new bosses that uh, have new tactics and stuff like that yeah but yeah i'll go on to the next point pking tanking and pures now this has been been a lot of uh, hype around this so i'll just read this first tanking will be a fully supported playstyle in the new combat system as we've just said with lots of extra life points for tanks and abilities that they can use to force NPCs to attack them and not their friends. You can also put debuffs on PvP targets so they they do less damage to other players if they don't attack you. That'd be good for clan wars now that I think of it. Yeah, like you'll have tanks in PvP. You can protect your team if the damage is reduced on everyone else but you, the team's going to have to take out you first. Yeah, I guess that's the idea. Although, I've got to wonder if it'll just end up being a fail sort of mechanic and you can just hit through the damage reduction anyway. (laughs) Making the taunt a bit pointless, but I hope that's not the case. It probably won't be. Yeah. Uh, So, pures are not being outlawed in the new system, apparently. But if you have chosen not to train your defense, you'll find yourself at a disadvantage in combat. It'll be much more important to wear armor of appropriate levels for the target you are fighting. As in the new system, armor gives you a lot more life points. So for example, someone with 99 attack and strength but 1 defense will probably get steamrolled by someone with 50 defense. So I've I'm kind of confused by this because it says that um, you'll find yourself at a disadvantage in combat if you don't train your defense, but that's already kind of the case. Are they just going to emphasize that it's going to be more of a disadvantage, I believe? Yeah, I guess so, because obviously defense will you get become, more... Yeah, more life points for higher defense levels and higher gear and stuff. Yeah, so if you, if you don't have good armor, then you'll just be able to get killed really easily. Yeah. So yeah, good fight, Pures. <laughs> I don't really mind. I think Pures will adapt and train their defense. It's not the end of the world for them. It'll be interesting and good for everyone. Yeah, I'm I'm sure they'll figure a way around it. Or have like a, mid, a maximum defense level where everyone sort of stops at or whatever. 
Yeah. Okay, so next point. Uh, new armors. We will introduce them initially through drops, but further down the line, we hope to introdu introduce ways to make them in the various skills, such as crafting. Uh, I guess a more recent example of this would be the Royal Dehyde. Yeah. That's pretty high level armor. I think it's 80 range to wear it, isn't it? Yeah, but what I'm hoping is that crafting and smithing high levels, like say 90 plus, will um, like guarantee you the ability to make good um, untradeable armors so that you need to have those skills to use it, just like overloads, and it'll just give an incentive for people to train skills and be good at it. Because like at the moment, you can just you don't really need to train your skills other than like herb lore and prayer and stuff because, well, prayer's a combat skill anyway. But for you know what I'm saying, like you don't actually need that to be good at combat. But if you needed smithing to have like the absolute best gear, along with monster drops, like you needed to get say a monster drop from a boss and then have the smithing level to do it, and it's all untradeable, so you have to a camp the boss for ages to get the drop, and then b have the smithing level required to make the good armor, that'd make it a lot more unique and give a lot more diversity between players as well. Yeah, I'm all for having that cool untradeable stuff because it's. For people who enjoy the training that skill, it'll give them an advantage in combat which they might not enjoy. Yeah. And obviously for like people who are completionists and like to do everything and have all the best gear, it'll sort of have give them more to aim for, I, I suppose. Yeah, Rather I mean, they'll... just training herb lore and prayer to 95. It'd be good to make some of these new boss monster drops untradeable, like some of the tradable ones to make money, fair enough. Um, but like a, for example, they could give you like a, a a special piece of something that you could smith into, say, a plate body, and then something another boss could give you a piece of something that's a could be ch put put into like an, a special amulet or a plate legs or something or um, dragon like better hide armor or something for rangers. But then once you've received that and you've got one in the bank, make it so that you can't receive that drop anymore and it's something valuable, tradable. Like for example, the QBD could have had something that. Made, made this plate body with smithing, but then after you've got the plate body, if you don't lose it, say if you lose it, you could get it again, but if you don't lose it, then that drop becomes a dragon kite shield or something. It's the same um, probability on the drop table, and it's exactly the same drop per se, but if you've got one, then it becomes something tradable, and if you don't have one, then you get the untradable thing first. Yeah, that would be pretty cool, actually, but I imagine it would annoy people who like to have bank spaces, who likes to have two of every item, so... <laughs> Maybe you have to make it a decision, like... I don't know how they would possibly do that. But fair enough, bank spaces are important. I, I like having my bank spaces as well. But, say, for high-level armor, like Pernix, that degrades, you're not going to have a bank spacer because it's degradable. And for, like, high-level armor, you're not gonna, really going to have a bank spacer either because of how much effort it'll take to make and how valuable it'll be. Yeah, I guess that's quite true, actually. Yeah, we don't have a bank spacer for a rapier because it degrades. Even if this new armor that hypothetically we're talking about doesn't degrade, um, having a bank spacer would just be expensive. And kind of pointless as well. Somewhat, yeah. Yeah, anyway, uh, there's another post here that sort of talks about party roles in a tiny bit more detail. So it's true that we're miss missing a classical healer role. We had talked about bringing in a healer class, so to speak, but people were worried about, about the effects on the fishing and cooking skills. So currently they're leaning towards healer roles being filled by summoning familiars. Uh, just for example, bunyips, unicorns, that kind of thing. Well, they say like but, the skin weavers from Dungeoneering. Yeah, that too, I guess. But... Um, yeah, I'm interested to see what they'll do with healers for summoning familiars. Because I wonder if they'll give those familiars uh, like specific abilities. Well, we have a healer that's got a specific ability. The unicorn, it, it's a healer and it can cure your poison. Yeah, I guess. But I mean, like sort of more abilities, like being able to heal other people with a unicorn as well. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. That'd be pretty useful. Like if your friend's disconnecting or just getting hit too much, I don't know, I suppose yeah. you could help them. You can do that now with Heal Other, but it uses your life points, so it's kind of tedious. Yeah, maybe they'll do something with the Lunar Spells. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? 
Next point then, two-handed crossbows. So they're going to be fletchable and smithable, and they'll basically be like the equivalent of two-handed swords for melee. So they'll be sort of big damage dealing, but slower sort of weapons. And obviously you'll be less protected whilst you're using them. Yeah. I hope that they kind of veer off crossbows as the main thing. I hope that you can choose between whether you want a crossbow and a bow. I do like the idea of using a bow rather than a crossbow, because that's what... Like, realistically, in Castle Ages, crossbows were extremely slow to reload. You needed a wind-up thing, and you'd kind of use your crossbow once if you were kind of in the towers, and then you'd get your bow because you can reload it a lot quicker. Like, the the mm. speed that we fire crossbow bolts in RuneScape is crazy because we don't actually reload it or wind it up. Like, if you, if you look into the medieval historical kind of aspect of things, crossbows are really, really slow. It's kind of just for a one-shot kind of thing rather than a keep using it every two seconds. Bow, yeah. Bows, you can kind of just grab an arrow out of your quiver and reshoot it pretty quickly, and that's what I think it should be. Bows should be better than crossbows for damage per minute. Well, it's like they've said before, like throughout this thread as well, like weapons of the same tier will all do the same sort of damage. So we will have the ability to choose between a, a bow and a crossbow, and yeah. we won't be gimped by doing that. I'm looking forward to that a lot. Yep. So training combat skills, you'll gain XP according to what combat style you're currently using, not the skill that unlocks the ability. So for example, if you unlock the ability called Strike through the attack skill, you can gain strength or defense XP with that attack ability. If that makes sense. Yeah. And all melee weapons can now train the different melee stats. So you can probably train a train your strength with a whip now is what they're basically saying. Yeah, well, um, James was saying that he thinks that that's why whips are going up, because they're 750k each now. But I'm not sure whether that's the entire reason. I think it's also because of the Crucible and stuff like that, but we'll see. Yeah, uh, and another sort of point on that is that Mage will now have the option to tra uh, train pure defense. I'm sure they meant range as well, but they kind of just left that part out, because it would make no sense for ra uh, Mage to be able to do it, but mage, oh, sorry, mage to be able to do it, but range not to be able to do it. I think it is a weird concept, but it is a good game choice, I, I guess. Yeah. Because if you already have 99 magic, but you haven't trained your defense as such, then obviously you'd be able to still use magic, because you'd be able to hit a lot of damage, because of your high magic level. And we'll get on to this further on in the video, but... Um, magic should be more affordable, or especially combat magic, so it might be more viable for someone with 99 magic to actually train their defense by using magic rather than just having to use melee to train their defense. Yeah, it just gives you more op options to train defense. So the next point, which is also very interesting, Dungeoneering Rings. Uh, this is sort of a response to a question. So the qu the question was... Do you know if you can remove the style requirements on the melee dungeoneering rings? Like for for the berserker, you have to use uh, aggressive, aggressive yeah. styles. But it the answer to this is that the dungeoneering rings are being reworked to work with the new combat abilities, so that the they're not going to have the style requirements as such. That's going to be good, so. I think. So yeah, another major change to Dungeoneering. It should be pretty interesting. Yeah, it'll be nice for Dungeoneering, this whole combat evolution, being able to use the abilities and stuff in, in, in Dungeoneering and healing. Healing will be very useful. <laughs> it'll make the tank ring actually kind of useful. Yeah. You will actually be able to tank properly. Indeed. Uh, another very quick point here. We'll be getting lots of more lovely mage and range gear to play with. And as I said before, I hope that that's through crafting, because that'd be very good to have a boss that drops bits and does a non-tradable kind of mage and range gear. Yeah. Cause I, I, I can't think of it right off the top of my head, but 
I don't think there is sort of mage gear for every ten levels. I might I might be wrong there. But... Well, at, at the moment you use Arams if you're at level seventy, or um, Virtus if you're you're rich and you've got eighty magic, and that's all there really is. The other the other mage armors have literally no melee defense at the moment, but they're going to fix that. I'm pretty sure because mages will be better against melee defending. Yeah. So I'll just get on to the next point then. Magic and weaknesses. Existing magic spells will still unlock at the same levels as before, so we'll all still be... Uh, if you're on a new character, you'll still have to use airstrike or whatever it is. But some monsters will indeed be weaker to some elements over the uh, other than others. So, for example, with glacials, they're weak to fire. Yeah, so uh, ice strike whims as well. You use fire spells because they're ice strike whims. Yeah, and I think fire does like double damage, doesn't it? Or yeah, it's like really that. tremendous. It makes it good XP an hour. Um, but I guess uh, it'll sort of affect more monsters than it currently does. Because like, obviously with Glacials, that's already in the system. But I'm thinking like new monsters with weaknesses could be like... Moss giants could also be weak to fire because they're like earth... And earth and fire do not mix well. <laughs> and they might be uh, have a high water magic defense. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah, we could, th we could think of loads of ideas like that. but yeah. I'm sure they'll work on it and we'll see it in the beta. Yeah, there's no reason for us to delve further into that. So, another really quick point. There isn't going to be any new skills introduced as a part of the combat rework. It's just so going to be part is. of the old skills like attack, strength, and defense, and mage, and range, and hit points. Yeah, it, all the skills will be the same. And obviously agility will not be a part of your combat level now. They said that they thought about it, and that's probably a good idea, but they don't want to just make it so that you need to have high agility to be good in combat for people that aren't really high agility. And probably you could think about it the other way. If agility is part of combat, you could train agility in combat and then the courses would be, like the XP rates would probably be better and the courses would be nullified and that's kind of what agility is. So it wouldn't be fair on people that have already got 99. Yeah, I think it's kind of a weird thing to put anyway. But I guess with agility it could add like actual physical dodges. Yeah, well that's that's what the idea was, but Jagex have said they don't really want to do that. Yeah, I guess so. Oh well. Anyway, next point. The shield bow. There is a new type of bow being introduced as part of the combat rework, which is the shield bow. It won't do as much damage as normal bows, but it'll have sort of more defensive stats because it's it's obviously a shield and a bow, so you'll have a shield whilst ranging. So, they're saying that that those, can basically be a range tank. Yeah, for those who don't know, uh, range and mage tanking will be viable options in PVM. Depending on the main attack styles of the boss. Yeah, I'm thinking. It says, I'm thinking the shield bow will be a good thing for Nex if you can have a kind of a tank, because ranging is currently the best method to kill Nex, and um, having a shield bow would make it even better. Yeah, uh, and for those who don't know, uh, obviously I've just said range and mage tanking will be viable, but uh, it'll sort of work around the combat triangle. So range tanks will be good at defending magic attacks, and mage tanks will be good at defending melee attacks, and obviously meleeers will be good at defending range attacks. Yeah. So that that all adds a new sort of spin on tanking as well, like. You'll, you'll actually need to change styles of combat in order to tank properly. Depending on what boss you're killing, yeah. So that'll be pretty cool. Anyway, just a bit of uh, beta-specific info. The beta will take place on a different beta-only world, or multiple worlds, sorry. So you'll, you'll still go to the normal runescape.com website, but there'll be a different button to go to the beta client as opposed to the retail client and i also read somewhere that the beta worlds will take a mirror image of your account 
Um, so you'll have the same bank and same stuff as your normal account, but whatever you do in the beta world will only affect your beta world character. You, they'll be like split once they once you first log into the beta world. So you can go back and train on your skills that will affect your normal account in the real servers, but the beta servers won't. Whatever you do in there won't affect it. It'll just be for kind of testing and fun purposes. Yeah, I was I was sort of hoping that for beta worlds we could just change our levels to whatever we wanted because obviously we need to test everything at every level and having to spend time leveling in a beta it'll just sort of waste time I think yeah but it, that being said oh, I can't really go back and do level 1 stats anyway because I'm, I'm already max so it's just going to be kind well, of for what applies to you you'll be able to test mm, I guess so but I, I was just thinking it might have better potential for testing purposes just to be able to modify your stats to whatever you wanted. Maybe we will be able to, who knows. Yeah, so next point, metamorphosis. This is a mage form ability if, I, if I'm not mistaken, where you can t set yourself on fire and you'll have new abilities whilst you're in that fire form and these new abilities that you temporarily unlock will be available on all spellbooks. So I thought that was just an interesting point to bring up. It just reminds me of the Fantastic Four when the guy can go flame on and turn into a flame. Yeah. It'd be awesome if we could fly in that form, but <laughs> we can dream. But yeah, that's just a small point. Next point is a question. Will bosses be updated to cope with the massive update very long answer sure. yes is the answer very Just long yes very in detailed answer so i'm i'm sort of thinking that this will refer to stuff like god wars and corp and stuff like that yeah so they'll become Corp's interesting harder. though because you can only use spears at corp at the moment i wonder if they're going to kind of change that with this combat evolution or whether they're going to keep it as a spear only boss kind of thing well, it is a, a kind of a weakness, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, obviously, at the minute, spears are in themselves are not very good weapons as such. Yeah. But with the rework, they'll, ob they'll obviously do the same sort of DPS as other weapons. So, you it'll leave, it'll be even better to use a spear, basically. Yeah, that'll hopefully help corp it nonetheless. Yeah. So the next what point? is combat levels. Combat levels will be based on your stat levels, like they are still, but the calculation itself has been changed and this cal this formula has not been announced yet. And the thing with that is, like now, you can get to 138 combat with one range and one mage, or if you're a pure with 99 range, you can get 70 attack and defense, or 76, without even going up a combat level. I think that the highest level combat's going to go up, like they've shown in that video, 139 combat. It's just going to go up a bit to counter, so say, it'll all be taken into account in a new a new kind of formula. It's not that they're adding a new skill or anything, they've already said that they're not. It's just the, the combat level formula is going to change around a bit. Yeah, so, like, for example, I'm 129 combat. But with this rework, I could be 131 combat. Yeah, well, for example, Tom, you're not max mage or range, are you? No. Yeah, and but you're already melee-based because your attack and strength is over 76. Um, that basically means that with the current system, you could max range and mage and not gain any combat levels. But with the beta, because you've already got some range and mage levels, I think that your combat level will go up a little bit. Hmm. I guess we'll have to wait and see when they an announce the new formula. Yeah. And then we'll be able to play around with it. Well, I'm sure once we get onto the beta at the end of this month, we'll see what combat level I am because I'm max melee. I'm maxed all combat stats, actually. Hmm. Anyway, I'll move on to the next point. So this is something that people have been kind of freaking out over. New prayers turmoil for rangers and majors so there's going to be range and mage equivalents of the turmoil prayer on the curses prayer book so the range one will be called anguish and the mage prayer will be called uh, torment and all three unlock at the same level so it'll be 95 prayer for these and 
people have been thinking that this will make rigor and augury redundant, but it, it actually won't because obviously rigor and augury have lower uh, prayer re level requirements. Yeah, and like you you use the normal prayer book until you're 92 or 95 prayer, and then you can swap to the cursed prayer book. That's just my opinion. Yeah, pretty much. And then people might say to that, well, what about all those Dungeoneering tokens I spent getting, Rigor? You're actually going to be refunded. This has been announced. You will be refunded your tokens for Rigor and Augury if you have bought them. Which is good because they're also no longer going to be in the shop. They're going to be unlocked by King's Ransom, Night Waves, mini, mini game, mini quest kind of thing. The same way that yeah. you get piety. Which is also going to remove a comp cape requirement. You're no longer going to need to unlock those spells from Dungeoneering to get the comp cape. Which is never a problem, because to get the comp cape, you need to get 120 Dungeoneering anyway, and having those tokens wouldn't be a problem. But, you know, just one less thing you have to buy. Yeah, he can buy more Chaotics. You can go and die with them like a, like a boss. <laughs> yeah. So the next point is damage outputs. All weapons of the same tier, for example, all rune weapons, should give the same damage output in the new system. Some attack faster than others to give variety, but the overall damage level should be the same. So, weapons within the same tier should have the same DPS. So, while daggers may attack faster than warhammers, daggers will do less damage per hit. So, when, when it sort of averages out, uh, these weapons should do the same damage. Which is kind of what we've been saying throughout this video. Which is actually really good because high levels will have different weapons for different monsters rather than just using the rapier for everything, for example. I think it'll be nice yeah. to be able to kind of swap your weapon up depending on what slayer task you get or what boss you're going to. Yeah, just to sort of allow us to use more of a variety of weapons. Yeah. So, next point then. Player weaknesses. Now that... I think this decision is quite interesting. I'll just go over it. So, player worn armor does not have weaknesses to particular types of combat style in the new system. For example, attacking a player with melee will not check if you're using crush or slash. It only cares that you're using melee. However, NPCs do still have specific weaknesses to the new system. For example, they could still be weak to water spells or crushing melee attacks. Yeah, so that only applies to PVM, but with PvP you could just use whatever weapon you really want. It really depends more on the combat triangle for player versus player, but still depends on different types of crush or slash or different magic elements for PVM. Yeah, and it sort of also depends on what uh, weapon abilities you use, because obviously different weapons will have different abilities. Yeah. And they'll be they'll be sort of more situational, and you'll be able to sort of decide what you want to use depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. So next point, player models have been re redesigned as a part of the update to allow for sheathed weapons, which is like just uh, putting your sword in a holster. Or if it's two-handed um, sword or big weapon, it'll be on your back magically, as Mod Mark said, magically hovering on your back. Yeah. I'm curious whether you can sheathe your shield on your back as well, but we'll see. I think you can. We'll have to there's, wait and see. There's, I think there's been an image of that that's been leaked quite a while ago. Because you know that the Musketeer outfit already has a sheathed rapier. It's just a tiny sheathed sword, but it doesn't. You can't actually take it out of your belt. If if oh, you look right. if you look closely at the Musketeer outfit, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> I'm gonna have to Google that when we've done this. Um, uh, next point, then, is action bars with magic and prayer. Oh, hang on. On the player models, we, we're going to get fingers. Thumbs up for fingers. Yes. We will get fingers uh, rather than uh, stubs at the end of our hands. I see what you did there, Matthew. That was very clever. Oh, okay, cool. I applaud you for that joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, action bar with magic and prayer. Magic spells and prayers can be added to the action bar. But summoning currently cannot, though it's something that we'd like to do in the future. Oh, this is so disappointing to hear. Yeah, especially for someone with 99 summoning, it's kind of frustrating because the amount 
of like clicks and stuff you have to like do and take into account when you're using a, a steel titan familiar to attack people it's fair enough when you're using a bunyip because you don't actually have to like use the summoning interface as such but it's terrible for when when you're trying to get a, a familiar to help you attack it's it's disastrous and they are saying in this post that they'll look into doing it in the future and i hope that they do it soon because it needs to be done I don't get what's so hard about having an ability for your summoning familiar that would just literally be attack current target. Yeah, like even even the scroll. Like at the moment, you you can set your right um, your left click option on your actual summoning thing up up near your run, just so that it uses a like a unicorn heel scroll or something. If like to put that on your bar would surely take no effort because the prayers can be on your bar and you can click on them with quick prayers. So surely you can. Surely Jagex could just make it so that you could have your healing scrolls for your unicorn on the hot bar or something. I don't understand why they wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, it is a bit strange. Maybe it's something we don't really know about. Like, it could be just to do with the engine itself. Yeah, of the it, could, game. it could be completely different the way that we use scrolls rather than turning on prayers. But, you know, they have to look into that and fix the engine then, don't they? Yeah, I guess so. So I'll go on to the next point then. Ammunition for magic and range. I think we've already said this, but basically the cost of magic damage spells have been reworked, so basically magic will be cheaper to use, and obviously it'll, the same will apply with range. Um, only the, With range, it's saying that you're still going to use an arrow per shot, but only with regular hits. If you're using like a special attack, it won't consume ammo, which is interesting, but you know that's, that's useful that rangers will use less ammo as well. Yeah, for for both magic and range, only your auto attacks will use actual ammo. So, so your special abilities will won't use an, any ammo, which is quite nice actually. Yeah, and by auto attacks we mean just clicking on a monster and letting your player kill it. Yeah. So the next point then is the prairie work. As a general note, a notable size of the prairie work involved giving magic and range access to what melee has, so it doesn't just stop at turmoil. Saps and leeches have been reworked too, and they most definitely do what they're supposed to now. Uh, by that, uh, I think they mean that currently, saps and leeches don't really work as intended. They're pretty slow to affect and don't really lower the defense enough to really give you a help yeah which is kind of what they're saying here and they're actually going to have more of an effect yeah because in most situations you'll just want to use turmoil instead of leeches I guess well in all situations <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much so another quick but kind of pointless uh, topic Staking in the dual arena, boxing is not going anywhere. I really wish that it was, but, you know, we can't really judge. I guess people like the idea of it being luck-based, like if you're all maxed combat. Yeah. It is totally just luck, but, oh well. I, I don't really box, so I don't really care. Yeah, that's true. Good for true. people that do box, I suppose. Yeah. But also, we might be losing players. Like, if you get cleaned, most likely the player's not going to play RuneScape anymore, and then we lose a person in the community. Even though that person didn't have a great attitude, we're still missing out on someone that affects the economy, if that makes sense. Yeah, even if in just a very minute way. Yeah, we don't want to lose all our players just because they all gamble their banks away. Yeah. So we'll move on to the next point, which is the whip vine. The whip vine stats will be boosted above a normal whip to make the whip vine more desirable. Which is a good point. The wording point. of this, the wording of this is a bit strange because it just sort of says stats will be bo boosted above the normal whip, and they already, it already are. Does. <laughs> but it's only a minute kind of boost, and they need to kind of make it a bit better because it has an 85 slayer requirement, which is a fairly high requirement, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas the normal whip has just a 70 attack requirement and that's it yeah so yeah hopefully it'll become a lot better hopefully on par with chaotix or maybe just under that maybe yeah slightly under that i'm thinking because they poison as well and stuff yeah so that's that done next point overload potions in the wilderness now don't freak out just yet 
With the rebalance of potions, we have indeed been able to get extremes and overloads into a good enough state to bring them into the wilderness. So apparently... You know, it's the way potions... that it should have been from the beginning. I don't. They banned it from the wilderness just because PKs were having a whinge. To be honest, that's the only reason. Um, people have done the mathematics on this, and the difference between 118 attack and strength and 125 is... It's really only like a 7% increase. It's like if you've got piety and someone's got turmoil, that's more of an increase. So they're really worried about, you know, nothing there. People are just having a whinge because herb law is expensive, really. Yeah, I can vouch for herb law being expensive and annoying because I'm currently going for overloads as well. <laughs> and I'm not enjoying having to make money all the time. But, yeah, that's a choice that I made. So, you know, I shouldn't have to whinge about it because I've put my through, myself through this decision. Anyway, I think that should just about wrap up all the information, or most of it, that we currently know about the combat rework. Uh, this is obviously pre-beta. We'll obviously bring out more stuff once beta is actually released, or if Jagex gives us more, any more information in the meantime. And thank you for being on this video with me, Matthew. It's That's been right. a good discussion. I think that we'll do kind of like a playthrough of the beta, like the first time we log into the beta. That would be an interesting video to make and for viewers to see. Yeah, and we'll obviously try and figure out some cool combat tactics that you could use. And we'll give overviews of uh, sort of all the abilities and stuff like that. Yeah. So, What are you most looking forward to in the in the combat evolution? Um, just the abilities, I think. Yeah, and the abilities like the bleed out and the ranging abilities and mage abilities are all really nice. And the fact that they're all going to be just as valuable as each other and the weapons are going to be more diverse and not everyone's just going to have to use a chaotic crossbow. Yeah, that's... I just hate the current style of just sitting AFK. It'll give us actually something to do during a fight. <laughs> yeah, other than YouTube. Which is a weird... It's a weird concept, I know, because it's RuneScape, but, you know, it'll be cool. Um, don't forget to subscribe to RuneHouse videos. I'll put a link in the description, as I said earlier. And I think that's just about it for this video. So, thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment if you have any points to add, and we'll see you in another video. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.